Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be using a one-click or one-command installer to get Chatbot installed on your server. Let's get started. Real quick, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. Now, if you're into electronics or DIY projects, you know the importance of a good quality PCB. It's the foundation of your project and without it, your circuits just won't work as intended. This is why I'm excited to partner with PCBWay, one of the leading PCB manufacturers in the industry. They offer high quality PCB and an affordable price and their customer service is top notch. You can easily upload your files and get a quote in minutes. Once you place your order, it takes care of the rest. They manufacture your PCB using the latest technology and quality control standards, ensuring that your PCB is perfect every time. And the best part, if you're looking for a high quality PCB and affordable pricing, look no further than PCB way. Now back to the video. Now I've done a couple of videos on AI already, so I'll leave a link down in the description or the playlist right over here. The first video was about Llama CPP and the other one was Alpaca Turbo. If anything, try to watch the first video, it basically shows you how Llama CPP runs and all this stuff that we're adding, like the Alpaca Turbo, which is a GUI front end. And what we're doing here today is also based on that code. To jump into it, by far, this is the easiest installer I have ever tried. Uh, Alpaca Turbo was pretty good, but there was some configurations we had to do to get it up and running. While this one is basically one command and it'll do everything for you, like all the legwork, installing all the Python libraries, getting NVIDIA graphic card to work, anything that you need, all you have to do is select some prompts and you'll get everything installed. But I'm gonna show you the demo right now. Now I am running on Ubuntu 22.04. I did try to run this on 23. It did have a little difficulties, but I am on a stock Ubuntu 22.04 that I recently installed probably like a couple of days ago. The only thing I have on here is probably an extension or two, but no other additional programs other than NVIDIA driver. And this is how the UI looks like. It's actually very simple. It has a couple of things you could use. You could choose between different models depending on the model that you're loading. I am using a 7B model right now and I do have it cached up and it is running in the background right now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is tell it, hi, my name is Don something just to see if it responds to it. I don't want to give it something complicated yet, but I generally just create a quick response, a quick question. And there you go. Hello, how can I assist you today? Um, let's try something like a code. So generate a Python code that can interact with Discord. And from here on, you're going to see a lot of CPU usage because it's going to start kicking up. And there you go, it's already running. So this is way much quicker. And I am running on a AMD Ryzen 7 1700. So it is on an older side of CPUs, but it's still got eight cores, 16 threads. Now I'm just gonna let this generate because you can see it actually has the three um, ticks that will actually turn this into a code. So you gotta kind of let this run and see where this goes. Now, this also does have a dark mode. Um, it's easier to record in light mode because I think it just looks better but you can turn on dark mode in this if your desktop is in dark mode or if your browser has dark mode, uh, it will automatically respond to that. But yeah, it's actually doing what it's supposed to. Import OS, import from Discord, um, environment, client, and there's a short code of how you could actually get it to run. It actually gives me a, a pretty decent response. Uh, it's using discord.py. I don't think it's discord py library. It gives me a quick, simple code. It's actually joining a channel called Reddit Gold. So it is taking it from somewhere. So if I had this as Nova Spirit and change stuff around and use my own token, I should be able to create my own bond. And that's just asking this AI to do stuff. I would love that I could actually uh, analyze stuff later on in the future. But for now, it's actually responding what, with what I need. Now, I'm still very new to AI and I find this extremely interesting. And there's some people on the internet where they know how to ask really detailed questions to get the response that they need. And that's where I fall short on it. And I'm still learning it, but there is a lot of techniques that you could do. Now, as far as character goes, you could actually build the character. Like if you wanted to be a, a scientist or a data analyst or whatever, you could actually define certain parameters for that. You also have parameters here where you could change the max tokens. The more, the better. If you're gonna do code generation like this, it's gonna use a lot of tokens. So uh, default is 200. I usually keep it around a thousand. There's a few other options that you're gonna have to read through the documentations to see what you need to adjust. But ultimately that's the parameters that you need to set. 
As far as models go, what's cool about this UI is that you could actually have different models. I, I do have a 13B here and I have a 7B here. And if you needed to download it, go over here and download the model that you need by going to Hugging Face and inputting the user and the model that you need and it'll automatically download everything and refresh the folders. Now I haven't touched training yet, so I'm not too sure about how to use this. And then there's interface mode. I tend to stay on chat, but there is notebook and chit chat which changes the whole user interface to look something else and operate something differently. So, and there you have it. That is the demo of text generation web UI. So I'm gonna show you guys how to install it. All right, so what we're gonna do now is head over to this GitHub, which I'll leave all the links down in the description below. And all you have to do is scroll down a little bit and it kind of gives you, oh, this is the dark mode I was talking about. But it kind of gives you a description of what it does, what it supports, uh, how to install it, stuff like that. Now it does work on Windows, which I tried already. And it also does work on Linux, obviously, because that's what we're using. So I'm just gonna copy the link for the Linux. Uh, actually, I don't even need to copy. I could just click on it. We're gonna unzip this file and it's gonna go into its own little directory. So I'm gonna CD or change directory to OOB Linux. And in here, there's gonna be a couple of command files. Now we do have to make it so it's executable. So we're gonna do chmod plus x, which is adding executable extension to start Linux. So now it's gonna turn green. In that case, we can now just do start Linux. And here we go. This does take a little bit of time, maybe 10 minutes or 15 minutes to get everything installed, but it is gonna download all the packages it needs and it's gonna download Conda. It's gonna download all the Python libraries, everything to get this up and running without you having to intervene with it. Now at this point, you could choose, if you have an NVIDIA graphic card like I do, which is a 1070, you could choose A. If you have AMD, you could choose B, but currently the installer doesn't support AMD even though the script does. So there is a way to manually install it with AMD. The script doesn't support it yet, but you can still do it. Then if you have Apple, you use C, and if you're gonna use CPU only, you do D. So I'm just gonna use D. You need to change this at this point because the script or the program that initializes everything will be compiled for specific things. So if you're using NVIDIA, it will that program will be compiled so it allows for GPU usage. And if you don't, then it's gonna have the other software that's compiled for only CPU usage. So you have to choose at that point. Worst case, if you chose the wrong thing or something doesn't work, just delete the folder, re-download everything and start from scratch again. But installing the NVIDIA version does take a lot longer than installing the CPU version. So this alone takes maybe five to 10 minutes if you're just installing CPU version. The NVIDIA version is much, much longer because it has to download the CUDA, has to download a different PyTorch, tons of other stuff that it has to collect and download. So it takes a lot longer. As you can see over here, as it's running, it's basically going through all the pips or pip three, just to install all the libraries that it needs. And it's self-contained in its own little area. So I've done this before on this computer, but it's re-downloading it again because it's on its own little environment that it's doing it. While we're waiting for this to happen, I am gonna go here, which is the 7B model. And I'll leave a link down in the description for this. We do need to copy the Charles on Fire of Akuna 7B 4-bit. Now this file is only about four gigs, which isn't too bad. But if you start taking a look at the set 13B and I go to file version, this is a lot more. Now there are different types. You actually don't need all of these. You just need like, I think one of the files. It'll tell you that uh, they renamed the certain files. So basically you just need one of these 10 gigabyte files. You don't need the whole library. But if you actually just put this uh, URL into downloading from their utility. It's going to download every file under the sun, which you don't really need at times. So you might want to just manually download the one you want. So if you want an uncensored version, uh, Q8 or Q5 or Q4, whatever, you just download that one and then you make the folder for it. All right. So now that everything installed, I hope you're following along. There are default options that you can choose. Opt is the Facebook Opt uh, 6.7B, which you could see it's not 7B, and then they have a lot more smaller dupes. So I am not gonna use any of these, and I am gonna choose L. Now, if you have pre-downloaded models from previous tutorials or anything, you could just not download the model and transfer it over yourself. But in my case, I'm just gonna show you L, which is what I'm gonna be downloading from Hugging Face. And you could just paste what we just did before, which is the Charles on Fire. I'm gonna paste this in here. And you can see how it's all lined up this way. Hit enter, and it's gonna automatically grab it. So this shouldn't take too long, maybe two, three minutes at most to get 4.2 gigabytes. Once this is done, 
it'll move everything to the proper folder it'll move everything to where it needs to be and you don't have to worry about it now while we are waiting for this i am going to pop over to uh downloads this linux text generation ui uh, this folder has been newly created and then there's another subfolder called models in there and you can see that it's actually downloading charles on fire underscore ggml vacuna seven bit uh seven billion four bit so this is where it contains all the models if you want to manually download just remember you've got to name it the way it has it so it's the creator's name underscore and then the model that you're using and then you can transfer all your files over to this folder and the software will pick it up and detect whatever you moved in there all right once everything is done downloading it will automatically start and you could just type in this url copy link into a new tab and you should be presented with what we were just looking at in the demo. And you can just play around here if you want to. Hi, my name is Don. And it will generate everything it needs to. Now, if I was to go into uh, system, the system monitor. Uh, how can I assist you today? Generate an itinerary. I yeah, I knew it. I-T-I-N. For a one-day trip into New York City. Let's see what that says. I'm from New York, so let's see if it's accurate. But you can see all the CPU usage is going to jump up. And there we have it. The answer is it's pretty quick with 7B. Wow, it's giving me an hour-to-hour hour hour basis on this. Anyway, that is it guys. That is the easiest way to install an AI chatbot into your computer and have fun with it. I, I particularly like learning about this AI stuff and hosting it myself, like self-hosting AI, just because the limitations are not there. I'm not paying someone to use this. And I know that whatever I'm inputting into here is saved locally and it's not being outcast to somewhere else. Like if you heard about the whole Samsung leak where they were actually putting notes into ChatGPT4 to summarize it and yeah, sensitive information got leaked that way. Stuff like that won't happen if you're gonna self-host your own AI. Anyway, if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing and press that little bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.